Well, welcome folks um, to this session on creative computing here at the ANU. My name is Charles Martin and I work here in computer science at the College of Engineering and Computer Science. Uh, and it's a real pleasure to be able to introduce to you some of the courses and projects and exciting things that you could get up to as a student um, here at the ANU working in creative computing. Now, before we start this session, I just want to acknowledge the, the country which we're standing on, the, the Ngunnawal and Nambri, country of the Ngunnawal and Nambri people here in the ACT. And I want to acknowledge the elders past, present and emerging uh, of those peoples. Uh, and I know that we have an international audience here. So just a shout out to indigenous peoples around the world um, as well. So a, a very warm welcome to you, um, everyone who is, is joining us for this session today. Uh, as I said, I know we've got people around the world and if you're in a strange time zone or think that uh, maybe it's a bit funny coming in to, to join us in Canberra, well, I just wanna say a particular welcome to you. We're really happy to have students from all around the world joining us remotely as well as in person here on campus. Now, the concept of today's session is to talk a little about this thing we call here, we here call creative computing. So the first question I want to just discuss is what is creative computing? <laughs> um, what, why are you here in this session? What kind of things can you do? Uh, and what might this all be about? Well, for me, the answer is this creative computing is any time that you're using coding and computer programming to help you with creative tasks. So you could be, for instance, coding up new kinds of musical instruments and using them to perform new musical performances. Uh, like we have Janice uh, here performing with a new instrument that she's designed at the ANU School of Music. You could be creating artworks by, by coding up in a system called uh, p5.js or JavaScript uh, and creating interactive and um, engaging generative artworks that can be displayed on the web or as part of an artistic profile. You could be doing things um, that allow people to engage in the world in a fundamentally new way, something like creating uh, augmented reality artwork. So here we have one of our, our project students, Zoro, who is working with the Microsoft HoloLens to create a sonic artwork to surround a real sculpture, this, uh, this sculpture, which is based here in Canberra. So these are these different type of activities that all involve computer programming and coding, but where the goal is to create a kind of creative or artistic experience for yourself and for other people through, through concerts, exhibitions, and installations. That's what creative computing is about. So I guess in today's session, we're going to um, talk about different kinds of courses and experiences that you could have as uh, a student at ANU interested in creative computing. Um, these are experiences which would let you get together with other like-minded people, do projects, uh, be creative, as well as um, learn fundamental skills in computer science uh, and the, the artwork, art forms in which you specialize. So the way that this session is going to work is that I'll spend a few more minutes giving a general introduction to the courses and, and project work which we have on offer. We're going to talk with some students, current students, um, alumni, and some of our teaching uh, staff here at the ANU who will be talking about their experiences in these courses and their experience as teachers or, or lab demonstrators in these courses. I'm also joined by Dr. Alexander Hunter from the ANU School of Music, who in particular will be talking about our Laptop Ensemble, which is a collaborative uh, course between us here at Computer Science and the School of Music. And I've also, uh, Alec will be able to speak about the different collaborations that come about when we get together between our creative arts schools here at the ANU, as well as Kex. So I'm just, I guess, the final thing is that we want to spend part of this session talking to you and answering uh, questions that you bring up. 
So if you at any point in time during the session have a question, please leave it in the Q&A for us. And we'll be um, addressing these questions twice during the session, once around in the middle, I guess around three o'clock, and then once just before we finish at 20 past three. So who's this for? Who could be doing creative computing at ANU? Well, it could be you. Um, I guess one of the uh, important things about our creative computing courses we have here is that they're certainly open to people who are not, uh, don't have a background in the arts and don't have a background in computing. We have students who take the courses that we're, on, we're offering who have never coded before in their life. This may be their first time ever doing computer programming. And we also have people who have been studying computer programming for some time um, and don't consider themselves to be an artist or maybe worry that they're, they're someone who isn't creative but they can take these courses too. And, and we find that we're able to work with people who are, are coming from both directions, both the arts as well as computing, and also people who uh, maybe have had a little bit of experience in both, but are still wanting to build their experiences. So the, first, the main piece of advice I'm, I'm going to give people who are, uh, are interested in pursuing their creativity, pursuing the creative arts, as well as doing computing, is that we have two fantastic undergraduate and master's courses here at the ANU in creative computing. Um, the first one is called Art and Interaction in New Media, which is a, a first year 1000 level course. Um, we also have a course called Laptop Ensemble, which is a bit of a newer course. It's at the 2000 or second year level uh, and we've just finished running that in this past semester. So both of these courses are not just creative arts courses and they're not just code courses. You actually need to work on, on both sides of your brain, work with both these skills in order to be successful in these courses. Uh, but they are both very accessible and we find that um, students who take them with different, lots of different experiences can have a really wonderful experience, learn a lot and, and do really, really well. One of the important things about both of these courses is that all of the assessments are about creating computer artworks. It's something which we're, we're toying around with how to, how to call this, but we call it something like making is learning. So you're going to be creating new kinds of artworks and um, that will be your assessment. At the end of the day, we want these artworks to be directed towards uh, real people, real audiences. So the presentations for your assessments are presenting them at exhibitions, if they're visual artworks or concerts, if they're pieces of music. Um, I'm gonna talk for a few minutes about, or just maybe one minute each about each of the two courses. And then we will uh, talk to a few about our, uh, our past students of these courses, but the first course which I was talking about is Art and Interaction in New Media. It's often called in our internal codes Comp 1720. It's a first year level course with a master's version as well. So if you're in one of our masters of computing courses, you can take it. This is a no prerequisites course. We teach coding from the beginning. You get weekly lectures on code and art and then weekly labs on creating code art together. I'll show you one of the labs in the second half of this session. And the major project for this course is to create some kind of engaging interactive work, which will then be put into an online exhibition. And again, I'm gonna show you that shortly. Our other um, fundamental course is Laptop Ensemble. So this is a course on creating music with code together and performing in a laptop ensemble. It's a second year course and uh, we hopefully a master's version of that soon. We're working on that. There's no prerequisites for this course either, although because it is at the second year level, we recommend that students have some kind of background coursework, either in computing or music, in order to, to um, make sure they're at the right level to start with this course. You learn about fundamentals of sound and music computing, and you also have some weekly labs for critique and collaboration. Similarly to um, Art and Interaction in New Media, the major project for this course is creating an ensemble piece for computer musicians and performing it together in concert. Now I might just um, stop sharing for a minute and 
have a chat with some of our, our students who we have joining us here today. So we're going to panel mode. <laughs> and uh, I guess maybe I'd like to open with, with Abigail. So Abigail is uh, a student of the Laptop Ensemble and in the last semester was also a tutor in Laptop Ensemble. So maybe Abigail, could you tell us about why you chose to study creative coding at ANU? Yeah, sure. So I was already studying computer science and had some musical background as well, mostly in choirs. And I guess the Laptop Ensemble course just seemed like a really nice combination of both these interests I already had. Um, yeah, and in the, in the project as part of that course, I was able to combine those interests and start a little laptop choir, which was really fun. Yeah. So maybe you could yeah. tell us a bit more about how, how that uh, performance worked. Yeah, sure. Um, so the way it worked was I had created this instrument that you, you sang and had it sample your voice and then it mimicked the way you sounded. Um, but along the way it added, like it, it separated out the different harmonics of your voice and, and added a bunch of weird stuff so that it, it sounded fundamentally different. Uh, and then I, I got four people to each play one of these in instruments while I conducted them in kind of a, a laptop chamber choir-esque thing. I'll just, uh, I might just share the, the screen of this going on so that we can see how that works. Yeah. Is our Abigail's laptop choir. Yeah. So, um, do you feel that there's taking this creative computing course has had an effect on how you think about your program or, or what do you think this has given you? Yeah, definitely. For me, I think it's given me the most musically, actually. I would you know, been in choirs before and tried to play a few instruments, but at the end of the day, my like creativity with these was limited by my physical acuity in actually playing them. And learning to make music with a computer instead change that limitation from something physical to something that only depended on what I could think of and whether I could work out how to make it. Um, which is just, it's a lot more fun to work with and it allows you to do a lot more. Yeah. Well, thanks for that, Abby. Um, I wonder if I could just uh, open up the same questions with Peter. Um, Peter, perhaps you could Tell us what you've been studying here at ANU and why you decided to take Laptop Ensemble. Um, yeah, sure. So I had, I guess, a similar story to Abigail in the sense that um, I studied primarily computer science and mathematics. So I was doing a Bachelor of Science, actually a Bachelor of Advanced Computing, but I've moved to a Bachelor of Science. So I'm doing computing and maths. Um, <clears throat> so I have a pretty strong background in computer science, um, but a weak technical background in music. AKA I couldn't read sheet music or do anything like that, but um, I've always been really passionate about music, um, you know, very interested in it. So I wanted to sort of try and take that from um, the sort of level of understanding I currently have, which is very surface level. And like, I appreciate things to sort of appreciating how they work and the fundamentals of sound and music. Um, so Peter, do you mind if I just share a little bit of the performance that you did uh, as sure. part of our recent lens performance? Uh, and maybe you could talk about this a little bit about what's going on. Yeah, okay. So my idea for this was to try and generate like music out of sort of organic interactions. So the players in this case um, were sort of combating each other in like a multiplayer environment. Um, and then there were side effects to what occurred. Like if they shot, there was a chance that they would leave this sort of brick behind um, and it scans across and then plays and generates a melody based on do in the game. So they're kind of unintentionally creating melodies as they play. Um, and I guess I was sort of riffing off the idea of like, you know, what kind of interesting sounds and co compositions can we get out of unintentional composition? That was the idea behind that. Yeah. So um, I guess um, something that you told me many times as we were studying Lens last semester was that um, you were quite worried about being able to express yourself creatively. Do you feel that you were able to uh, overcome that feeling in that course? I'd say like it wasn't entirely overcome, but like I definitely um, 
saw how changing certain parameters and like playing with um, what I've sort of given the players can definitely change how they express themselves creatively. I guess this is sort of like a hands off, like I didn't sort of play it in a sense, like I'm sort of indirectly playing it. Um, so there's still an element of expression, but not as sort of um, as much as a more direct composition method. Um, but I definitely felt sort of creatively fulfilled. Like I feel like quite satisfied at the end of it, like with what I created. Yeah. Um, so maybe I'd like to, to chat with Yichen for a minute. Hey, Yichen. Oh, hi. <laughs> yeah, streaming from the same building as me, even oh. though we're in the same building, we're different screen. <laughs> now, um, Yichen is a is, uh, student who has taken our, our bachelor's program and is now in our master's program. So um, perhaps you could talk to us about what you've been doing in creative computing and what courses you've been taking. Yeah, so um, I'm currently doing an advanced master degree in um, computing and um, largely my degree is sort of doing research in um, about art and empathy of embodied interaction. Mm -hmm. And well, sounds really <laughs> <laughs> big <laughs> abstract here. So basically what I'm trying to do is to see whether um, like whether we can bring more um, creative stuff um, by using our computer science, computer system. Mm -hmm. And why did I study creative computing? Well, it was a long story, but in short, I personally like photography, arts, all the things related to visual arts and social arts like philosophy. But I never thought that like you were like has relations to my study, which is computer science. I thought like I would just be a programmer, like, you know, and then I took the course come 1720, um, like Charles talked about, it's talking about the art interface design, um, using some computer science, uh, the programming thing. And then I realized, oh, like, oh, there is an opportunity that I could bring, combine what I like and, with what I do together and um, yeah and so this is like why I studied um, creative computing and maybe the key takeaway from the creative computing is so I like research I like to see whether we can bridge um, humanity with computer science I don't want computer science just as a part of technology to for the sake of making it like for the sake of technology i want it to be beneficial to, to people and um to be more like like you know humanizing in a sense yeah so, yeah guys um it's what i'm doing now yeah. we're trying to um building up a sculptural like a ai experience um on top of sculpture on top of sculpture thing and to see like whether it can relate people um, to their personal experiences. Yeah, so I'm just streaming a, a, a project which uh, Yuchen was collaborating um, with me and with some other of our uh, research students on called the Sonic Sculpture. So unfortunately, I just couldn't find the video of Yuchen's newer work. So sorry, Yuchen. <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, um, and I should say also that, that Yuchen is someone who I'm not going to play Sonic the Hedgehog 3. No, back. <laughs> Go back to the beginning. Have to keep an eye on YouTube when you're just streaming things continuously. Yichen is someone, um, and, and Abigail is another student who took one of our courses and then became a tutor for that course. So um, we have uh, many of our uh, laboratory sessions um, where students are working on, on their skills. They're, they're working through laboratory exercises. They're guided by other students who've taken the course before and are our tutors. So both Ichen and Abigail are tutors in our creative um, creative computing courses. Yeah, I'll maybe I have comment. Yeah. yeah, so like Charles said, I'm tutoring COM1720 and I I really want like, you know, during my tutoring, I can help students who are sim similar like me, like the experience that want to bridge, you know, the art stuff with common science together. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for that. <laughs> um, and we really appreciate it. And I think that the, the outcomes are, are really there for everyone who takes these courses um, from the hard work of people like Yichen. Now, I'm just going to, to pause for a minute and maybe discuss a few of the questions. I know that they've been answered in text in the Q&A, but 
uh, oh, there's one open right now. So someone said, what's your advice to people who want to be good at creative computing and get the most out of the courses? Um, that's, some, <laughs> that's a very good question. I guess uh, my advice, and others can jump in, is that we have two wonderful courses which you can, um, you can take as an undergraduate or master's student. You can also extend that experience to get good. If you want to get good, you probably have to take multiple courses or keep working at something. And the way to do that for the moment with creative computing is to take a projects course after you've done your course. So if you're a, um, a master's student, in the first year of your master's, you might take one of our courses. And the second year, um, second year uh, of your master's, you might do a project course, which is kind of aligned with, with something you did in Art and Interaction or in Laptop Ensemble. So that's a really good way to get good is to use the course as your foundation and then extend yourself in a research project or an honors project. Um, just going through a few of the answered questions already. Uh, is it popular to combine visual arts, not as a dual degree, um, with a bachelor's in IT? You can take one of our computing courses, which allow you to, to pursue the arts, but also there is space in your degree program to take electives. Um, so if you choose your electives carefully, you might be able to design a, uh, a course which works well for you. Um, Don Martin has asked that they've learned programming and are asking if they're in an engineering program in mechatronics, would they be able to take laptop ensemble? Yeah. You totally would, um, as long as there's space in your degree. Uh, if you're doing a master's uh, in mechatronics engineering, I'm not familiar with the whole program, but if there is space for uh, there for is electives, elective uh, there is. Abigail's uh, figured it out for you, um, or she's memorized the entire program guide, which either Let's option is possible. <laughs> um, <laughs> you can take those as electives. Um, what are the career prospects of these courses? I think maybe Alec, can, you can read out your answer, which you were <laughs> talking about. Sure. Hi, everybody. Um, yeah, I think um, one that um, has some interest um, across the two schools um, and is of particular interest to me at the School of Music is sound design for video games. Um, and a lot of the software that we use in the Laptop Ensemble is also used in creating dynamic um, music and, and sound design for games, um, but also um, the three of us that um, together convene the Laptop Ensemble are also really heavily involved in both in the kind of general performing scene in, in computer and electronic music um, and also in the academic scene. So we recently ran this conference, um, ACMC, with a really wide range of people who both do this for a living in the kind of academic sphere, people who perform um, for a living, people who are maybe engineers, but also um, kind of as, we, as um, we've been talking about, kind of use the space of creative computing, both in their own practice and in their coursework to kind of open up new ways of thinking about their existing practice. So that kind of being put in collaborative situations situations where you don't really know what the answer is going to be, regardless of, um, of what you do, I think is super useful. Hmm. Yeah, so I, I guess something I might add is that um, I think people who are here in the audience and listening to this are the kind of people who want to take something like coding, want to get into programming some more, want to become great computer scientists, but also like have this feeling that that's not quite enough for them. They want to engage with the world. They want to have a say about culture. They want to have an impact in the arts and creating artworks or, or creating visual, musical and interactive experiences is one of the best ways that we can engage with our communities. So mm -hmm. it's, I think of this as not just about careers, or about um, getting a job, but it's about having an impact in the world. And if you wanna have an impact in the world, learn how to make things that people like. And what better way to do that than by creating artworks, by creating music, by standing up in front of people and saying, here's what I've made, 
here is this piece of music. I've created some new technology um, in order to play this thing, which can only be heard right here today. And it's, it's a very unique thing. And it's something I really encourage everyone here to, to be able to do and think of as one of their important skills. So I think that maybe there's, there is probably no, no job ad on, on, uh, for laptop musician right now, unfortunately, but, um, I think that these skills can become one of the really important uh, touchstones in, in your collection of, of skills as a, an engineer, uh, as well as a human. Um, I think we've got maybe no more open questions. So I might like to start to talk about the course content uh, of these courses in a, in a little bit more detail. So. I'm going to discuss um, a little bit about uh, art and interaction in new media. And we're going to talk a little bit about laptop ensemble. I guess I also want to talk a bit more about, about research projects that we've got uh, and the, the potential for collaboration. Uh, and then we will have time for a few more questions at the end. So I guess I think I'll just go backwards and talk about the research projects and then we'll get back into art and interaction in new media. Um, I mentioned before in relation to this question about how to get good at, at creative computing. One of the best ways to get good is to keep practicing these skills, keep refining them. So if you take a course, you get a, um, you know, a very concentrated 12 week period to develop some skills. And then if you want to take that thought further, it's a great idea to take one of our project courses. So, here in, at the ANU, we have lots of opportunities to do individual and research projects um, for undergraduate students, maybe in their fourth year, one of the four year programs in engineering or computer science or master's students as well. So if you'd taken one of these courses, you might like to develop your skills further by designing and deploying an interactive artwork as a, a project, creating a new artistic experience with AR like uh, Yi Chen is doing, developing new musical instruments um, like I know Abigail's been doing a lot of that work outside of class as well. Um, and exploring new music and art with machine learning, which is something which I'm really passionate about and, and hope to uh, have more students. And there's lots of more, lots more opportunities that you can take. Um, I, these are really exciting opportunities. And if anyone gets in touch with me and says, oh, I want to make a new musical instrument. The first question I ask is whether they've taken laptop ensemble or art and interaction in new media first because those two courses give you the great background in order to be able to uh, do research projects and individual projects at a, a, a really excellent level. Um, oh, whoops. I guess one, one other thing we do with these projects is collaborate with other research groups and other research organizations. So we do collaborations with um, this, uh, course called Tech Launcher, which is one of our software engineering courses where students get together to do small projects. This is an example of a Tech Launcher session where a group of laptop ensemble students were um, developing a new performance and, and treating that as a software engineering project. Uh, we also do collaborative work with um, the research organization CSIRO here in Canberra and their uh, sub-organization called Data61. And we've had a really excellent um, collaboration for a few years, which was part of this uh, work with the sonic sculptures that, that Yi Chin was showing. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about Comp 1720 right now, maybe for five minutes, and then maybe Alec can take over to, to tell us about Laptop Ensemble. So I'm going to go to 1720. I had it here somewhere. Oh, yeah. So if you want to have a look at um, what it might be like to study creative computing. You can go right now to the website for art and interaction and new media on the, at the ANU and have a look at actually the lectures and the labs for this course. And in particular, what I want to show you are some of these great labs we have people doing. So as I said before, in Comp 1720, all of the weekly work is to prepare you to create a major work, your major project for this piece, for this uh, course. So each week you're working on specific 
skills in introductory computing and introductory art and putting them together to create new little artworks. So this week, this is actually what we're doing this week, just start today. Uh, the theme was kaleidoscopes for the week five lab. So the idea was that everyone in the class would get into the lab at the moment we're teaching online. So they're meeting on Microsoft Teams and creating uh, kaleidoscopes using these scale, rotate and translate um, commands within the programming language we're using, which is called p5.js. And one of our tutors, Harrison, designed this little uh, activity here where you can experiment with how these simple commands work by dragging them into a bit of P5 code. I'm just going to make this a bit bigger. So here is the JavaScript code. There's a function called setup, which runs, runs once and creates a canvas for us to paint on, just like a painting canvas. That's this area down here. And then the function called draw is with the bit that's actually going to draw our image. And at the moment, it's only doing one thing, which is drawing a orange rectangle on a white background. So it makes the background white, sets the color to orange, makes sure we don't have a, a edge on our rectangle and then just draws our rectangle. And then we can add these other blocks in here, rotate by 30 degrees to move our block around. Oop, I wanna move this. <laughs> now make a moving block. I can scale it. And the idea of this lab was to learn how to use these uh, transformation <laughs> um, commands to transform small images and start to make a kaleidoscope. So you could experiment with what happens if you change the values here or if you do them in a different order. I probably should have uh, learned to do this correctly before demoing it, but um, you get the picture. Then the second part of the lab, you extend yourself to, to create something which is more like a kaleidoscope and work with others in the group. And here's a, a demo that you might like to extend to create this some kind of kaleidoscope image. And this semester, because we're teaching online, our students have been meeting on Microsoft Teams and working in a uh, co-coding or pair programming environment called P5 Live, where students can have one program that they're working on together, even though they're on two separate computers, they can each type in commands and it gets added into the same program and they can immediately see the results. And that's been really, really fun this semester to explore that. So at the end of Comp 1720 or Art and Interaction in New Media, um, the students develop a major project and we say that we put this into a online exhibition. So this is our online exhibition from last year. And every student in the class has their, their artwork here. Um, I just want to demo one artwork, which was recommended by some of our, our tutors as being especially interesting. This one makes a little, it's a combination between visual art and music, really. You can make little drum beats by collecting dots. So every time I collect a dot, it adds another beat. And that would be, I might go back to the gallery. So that's Comp 1720, Art and Interaction in New Media. Um, and at this point, I might like to invite Alec to talk about um, the Laptop Ensemble course. Uh, so I'll stop sharing my screen and Alec can jump in and share his for a while. Sure. Thanks, Charles. How does that, that looks all right to everybody? Yep. Excellent. Um, yeah, so I, um, depending on which building we're in, I'm either um, at home or kind of the weird one in the room, but um, this idea of having a laptop ensemble that isn't, um, doesn't live in an art school or doesn't live in a music school, doesn't live in a computer science school, but lives kind of at the university in this kind of, you know, focus on double degrees and really um, bringing lots of different disciplines together. Um, and I'll 
all of us have really um, diverse backgrounds, both professionally and um, in terms of our education. So really, the three of us um, co-conveners were collaborating for a while in our own professional practice before we, I don't remember exactly how the conversation went, but probably, hey, this is really cool stuff. What if we did this for our job and not just after five o'clock? Um, and we should also probably build some kind of way of inviting undergraduates into this collaborative music and computing space, um, both to encourage that kind of collaboration and also to, to bring it out of um, extracurricular stuff and into curricular stuff. Um, yeah, so in addition to um, the laptop on some I mean, my role there is kind of both to advise on uh, kind of ensemble dynamics, um, you know, when we get together and we work together and I've, I've um, consulted on tech launcher projects as well. And there you sort of have a goal, right? And you need to kind of work towards this goal that a client has. With a laptop ensemble, there is no goal, right? You're working together with this group of people with really diverse skill sets and you have no idea what you're going to make in the end of it. Um, so in addition to that, we have, um, other ways of supporting this um, laptop ensemble collaboration, which includes me sending, um, not sending, but inviting and suggesting first year, especially first year composition students to go and take 1720. Um, and also each year I get a few composition or a few computer science students taking first year composition courses. This idea that there are spaces in computer science for people who don't already have a programming background and there are spaces in a music degree for people who don't have what we might consider a more formal or traditional musical um, education and that space between the two you know we have people who are expert at, at different things is really interesting and, and generative and some of the best music I get in the first year composition cohort comes from computer science students who aren't kind of maybe have different sorts of expectations of, of what uh, computer music is. Um, so I thought I would just talk a little bit about what the course is. Um, so it's uh, project based and it's that kind of flipped model where, you know, when you come to class, like, okay, it's Tuesday afternoon, I'm going to Laptop Ensemble. You don't show up and we kind of line by line go through um, particular programming problems because we don't know what your problems are going to be. We don't know what questions you have, what things interest you, what musics you're interested in, um, whether you like bleeps and bloops or beats or some kind of space in between the two. Um, so each week we have uh, a list of topics. This uh, website here is uh, available and you can come and check out our uh, materials if you like, but we have a, a sort of theme. Um, so each week you're provided with some materials. I just need to move this slightly out of the way of the, the Zoom interface. So for example, week three, you have access to this page, you have a goal, um, and there's this kind of rough prompt, right? So it's not, here's a problem, solve it. It's do something interesting with sampling that tells us something about who you are as a person or as a musician or as a programmer, whatever. Very, very general um, thinking. And then because there's such a broad range of questions and problems and software solutions and eventually hardware solutions when we get into working with controllers and maybe building controllers, we start to provide um, an insight into a network of resources and maybe some interrogations. So, you know, there's just some general questions from us and we point you in particular directions. But really, um, before class, you've worked on this and you've um, created some kind of demo that's exploring this topic. So when we get to class, um, first thing we do is we listen to everybody's AV diary. So I've explored sampling in week three. I've made a 60 second video, you know, a screen capture of me experimenting with this particular instrument that I built that I find interesting. 
and we have a chat, you know, what went well, what didn't go well. Occasionally somebody will build a particular tool or an instrument that everybody else thinks is the coolest thing they've ever seen and everybody uh, steals it in all of the subsequent weeks, which occasionally happens and is pretty spectacular. Um, and sometimes those the problems that are solved by students are problems that the, the three of us and, um, and Abby are also looking to um, solve. There's lots of polite borrowing that, that goes on. Um, and then in the context of these instruments that you've just built, answering this weekly brief, we randomly generate uh, small groups. So you're put together with um, two or three other students who built totally different instruments. You're given 20 minutes, half an hour, something like that, to quickly based on the kinds of behaviors that your instrument is, um, is capable of, build an ensemble piece. And so in Laptop Ensemble, there's this, um, this combination of input from us, input from all of the resources that you have access to, to develop a personalized tool. And then there's always, every week, the idea that I have to try to find a way for my tool to interact in an ensemble context. And what that means is really different every week, and it's really different um, for every ensemble. Um, so maybe just quickly, and we can have a chat about this um, this at the end, um, especially um, having a few uh, Laptop Ensemble alumni in the room. Um, but in terms of deliverables, um, right, we do ask for these kind of weekly, you know, this is what I got up to um, videos, and then twice a semester, you submit those as a sort of folio with um, a journal. You know, this is what I was trying to do. This is how I was addressing um, the prompt that week. This is what I've learned. This is how I'm going. So kind of both doing something and reflecting on how it's going. Um, and then um, like in 1720, there's this big project at the end. Um, previously, it's been either part of a new music festival that we run in the School of Music, uh, offsite at a local art center when we were doing in-person concerts. Uh, and this last um, semester, we had a, a live YouTube premiere gig, which was super fun. So you're, in addition to the, the weekly projects and working with you uh, with a different group every week on that, um, that prompt, you spend the semester developing an instrument or a set of instruments um, and a piece. So you go from, um, you know, I remember in week one, maybe, or maybe it was week two, asking people to kind of improvise with these instruments or create a short piece that was maybe three minutes long, felt like this really intense, daunting thing, right? I've never, you know, never done computer music before. Maybe I've never really engaged in music before or I've never engaged in programming before. Over the course of 12 weeks, you've got, in some cases, five, six, seven, maybe 10 minutes of a piece that involves maybe three other people working on an instrument that you've developed with this kind of um, thought out musical structure. And they were, yeah, the, that video is up on uh, our YouTube channel. It's pretty, pretty fantastic to see the progress that people can make in 12 weeks. Uh, do you uh, want to share some of our, our um, concerts? Sure. Uh, yeah, I don't have it open. I've just got you. Oh, this is a picture but, of me. Um, they've, already, they've already got me. <laughs> yeah, they, they have. I was, yeah. Uh, yeah. If you unshare, I can I share it back. That's all right. I think I can, I can grab it quickly, uh, unless you want to. No, we got it. You can see all the panel shows that, woo! Oh yeah, did we watch that? That's one minute. Let's just make sure the volume's at like twenty percent. Otherwise, we'll blur everyone's Yeah, well, actually, minds. I we might. I haven't shared my audio because I've got Teams and all these okay. things open. And they'd be well, if you un unshare, then I can. Uh, yeah, let's back do and that. I'll have it. Cool. Okay, thanks for your patience, folks. Sharing back to uh, the yeah, ANU laptop ensemble. So. I'm just going to show you a, a kind of one minute demo of different kinds of music that that folks in the laptop ensemble have created over the last few years. This is 
It's one of uh, Peter's works from the final concert this year. This is a work for piano and computer. This is a live coding performance. We have multiple performers using a uh, text editor to create code live, different kinds of controllers. It's quite an amazing piece with this network connection by French and C. Online collaborations. Just get into a bit more detail on a few of those, a uh, few of those pieces. Whoop. So the first piece we're going to see is this uh, text adventure system. Whoop, make sure I can hear that. This was a kind of Dungeons and Dragons adventure for multiple performers. Another fantastic performance from Cassie Chun Krogan this year. Don't wait for it. Just. Just. This was another collaborative Just. work between three performers Just. with sound Just. material from Twitch. bit of beat destroyer i i because um laptop ensemble is a second year course we uh have several different ways of creating computer music there's different programming languages that we offer the students a chance to to try out um there's text-based languages and we're mainly programming in a system called extempore which is actually developed here at the anu as part of our research uh, and we also have this um, visual programming language called Pure Data, where you create a musical instrument by dragging little boxes. And they're, they're both programming languages, but we, even though we usually think programming is a text thing, it doesn't have to be. This is a piece, collaborative work, uh, developed by Claire, which is for three instrumental performers along with Pure Data. by Brent Schutze.
This was another piece in Extempore by uh, Albert and Young Senga, which was again in, in Extempore, this text based language. And that the collaborators on this piece were all contributing lines of code in Discord. So some of our students had figured out how to connect Discord, the chat service for games, with Extempore and were programming it. Um, remotely, everyone collaborating together <laughs> through Discord, which was pretty wild, really. Yeah, a few examples of, of works from, from Lens. Uh, I guess we're, we're getting to the end of our session. I might just ask if there are any more questions that we can help you with um, in the q and I can't see any ones that are um, are still open, but maybe someone who's been monitoring the questions, <laughs> uh, Yi Chen or, or Peter, could just tell me if there are any that are yet to be discussed. Yeah, hey, I guess we've had a fair few people asking about whether they can study this course in X degree. I guess the universal answer to that is either you need to take it as an elective or potentially as one of your course, um, like your degree courses. In my case, having a computer degree, I had the slot for generic 2000 level courses, so I could take Comp 2710 without any Sort of consequences to my degree um, that just adds on to what I've achieved. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think generally you can. Um, and someone just asked if we could list those programming languages which I've described for them. Oh that's great. Yeah. So the uh, yeah the Peter's absolutely right. The generic answer is yes you can take these courses in any degree that you're enrolled in as long as you have space for a course that you choose yourself. And most degree programs do have space for electives. Um, the other question that we do get is whether um, from a student who might come and say, oh, you know, I really love music, um, but I haven't done any programming yet. Can I take Laptop Ensemble? And our answer to that is also generally yes. We do try to, these courses are designed for students who either haven't got much experience in art or don't have much experience in coding. So from wherever you're coming from, either direction, arts or computing, uh, you'll be able to take these courses and have a wonderful time and do excellent work. Yeah, um, not only just take it, but I guess add like a unique perspective to it. I know like yeah. when I took the course, having students who are really expert in music really helped us like with the collaborations. Like you can kind of throw back to them about how you actually take a digital idea, something computer science here and make it. Um, apologies. Well, candles burning very aggressively. <laughs> the sound yeah. art going on. Yeah, you too. Yeah, I mean, COMP1720 also applies to what Peter mentioned that um, we have certain amount of students doing Bachelor of Visual Arts and mm. they did pretty well on this course and their work is sometimes more creative compared to computer science too. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so, and, I, and yeah, Abigail. Uh, I suppose the flip side to that is as well, a lot of the best ways to learn things are teaching them. And mm. there's been things I've learned about music having had some musical education beforehand, just from watching computer science students try to learn music the first time or about programming from trying to watch music students learn to program their ideas out. Um, yeah, there's there's some fantastic stuff that comes out of people learning new skills in unusual contexts. Yeah, so I guess oh, Abigail, you're one of these people who has had, you've had a musical life in the as a music students in in before your tertiary education and doing choirs. Yeah. Um, then you use this opportunity to maybe bring your professional life into your your. Uh, uh, musical life a little bit more as well. And now you're up at the School of Music recording your piece and sending it off to conferences, so. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, uh, it's pretty cool. Um, Yichen, I guess I wonder if you could talk, speak from the, the tutor's perspective, mm -hmm. um, maybe about the kinds of people that we have on the team um, tutoring in 1720, because we have obviously uh, not just me um, teaching that course, we also have a team of tutors and also Tony Curran um, giving us lectures every week in, on um, art. Yeah, so um, Charles, like if you can navigate to people on page in on the call. So yeah, so as Charles mentioned here, like the, like the group 
of tutors from COMP1720, like we come from different backgrounds, but like there are computer science students, there are um, computer science students doing arts like me, and there are sort of like students doing arts like it is, um, also she's on the page. Um, also we have lectures, um, Tony from Art School, so it's a really diverse uh, community, like to like for for your um, learning experience and we are trying our best to help you not only just for programming but also from like our perspective so now that we're we've got one minute to go so i think i'm just going to say um you know if you're sitting there watching this session and you still are wondering how to get started the first thing to do is to come to an open day session so you can tick that one off well done the second thing to do is that when you're in your degree at ANU, take one of our electives, take art and interaction in, in new media or take laptop ensemble. In either course, you'll have a fantastic time combining um, your yearning to create new pieces of art, as well as learning great things about computer science. After you've done that, do an individual project with one of our team members. It's the greatest way to push your learning to the next level. And then finally, be awesome. You can do that at any time. So why not start today? Uh, and I'm just going to leave it on the, uh, the, the final slide, which is uh, giving you some advice on how to get in touch with us. We've got um, the, our social media address is at ANU Kex on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter for the ANU College of Engineering and Computer Science. Um, and then uh, I don't know what's going to happen now do we get turned off at exactly 3 30 pm or do we wait to see if there's any more questions oh there's one more question but it disappeared it was a, a lovely thank you oh well yeah <laughs> thanks, thank you. yeah thanks bargov <laughs> yep well i've been charles martin <laughs> <laughs> i wasn't ready for that um, yi has been yi chen alicanta has yeah. been alicanta <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're going to sign off and uh, close down this session. So thank you to all the participants, Alec, Yichen, Peter, Abigail. Um, and thanks to um, all of you participants joining us. Hope to see you at ANU soon. <laughs>